Um, I thought at first this was maybe a bluff. This was, uh, you know, this was a way of kissing up to Trump. But it looks like they're actually doing it. And it seems to me oh, like yeah. a pretty big deal. Like it's it's the end. Like it's the end of something. It's the breaking of something that can't be put back together. What do you? How do you feel about it? Well, look, um, this is just a process. It's an autocratic playbook, and they're very methodically going through it. Um, we the idea is that they'll do it piece by piece, and therefore we won't notice the big picture. But when you read how democracies die by the two Harvard professors, their number one first rule of how autocrats rise to power is rejecting of democratic norms. And debate is at the heart of a democratic mm -hmm. norm. I mean, in England, the prime minister has to do it every day. Um, it, it really goes to a, sort of two trends in the Republican Party. One is Republican Party has become a party of fear. What, what is a, not debating, but you're afraid to debate? Yeah. Nobody dodges a debate. They think they're going to win or they think they did win. It's fearfulness. Why do you make it harder for people to vote? Because you're afraid what will happen if a lot of people vote. Okay, so this story is really wild. Apparently the Republicans have committed to not participating in the presidential debates, which is kind of ridiculous in many different layers. I mean, first and foremost, all of the questions at these debates are typically framed from the right-wing perspective. Even the ones that are supposed to be theoretically favorable to the Democrats are once again incredibly right-wing, which is of course makes sense because the Democratic Party is a right-wing party. They're fundamentally a capitalist party, and by definition, right-wing. But even on top of that baseline right-wing politics that the United States has fully embraced, they tend to be even further to the right and more biased in favor of any argument that a Republican might make. Really, the presidential debates have been treating Republicans with kid gloves since the very beginning. But now the Republicans are choosing not to participate in it altogether. And this honestly could go one of two ways. On the positive side of things, it would mean less media attention, theoretically, for the Republicans. Because if they're not participating in these debates, well then, they would get less stage time. But we also saw the way the media treated Donald Trump in his first presidential election. They loved giving him time. And to be clear, they're desperate to give him even more time. Because when Trump was out there saying ridiculous things, their ratings were really good. But on another layer, it's kind of too late. Trump's name is already pretty big. And as it looks like right now, it really does seem like Donald Trump is the top contender to be the Republican nominee. And so in that sense, the damage is already done. Which brings us to the not so great side of this. Now to be clear, what the person said in this interview about Republicans now embracing a politics of fear which lends them to autocrats has always been true. That has literally been true since the Reagan days. I mean, Ronald Reagan was a darling of the right, and he was also a failed actor that became the president. Just like Donald Trump was a failed reality show host that became the president of the United States. Republicans really love candidates that have no idea what they're talking about. But the fact about autocrats is completely on point. The harsh reality is, Republicans are, and really always have been, a fascist party. You have Democrats that represent neoliberalism, and then you have Republicans that represent the further to the right of that, which would be fascism. I mean, fundamentally, their economic theory is the same as any other fascist in the world, and that is one of rampant privatization and basically selling off any aspect of governance or democracy to private institutions for profit. But we are accelerating towards that at an increasing rate, and the Republicans committing themselves to not debating the Democrats is a pretty good sign that Republicans, by and large, do not view the Democratic Party as legitimate political opposition. And the reason why that is significant is because if they are refusing to accept any legitimacy of any political opponent, it means that they are willing to use any tricks and lies in order to get themselves elected. I think the fact that they stormed the Capitol on January 6th is pretty solid evidence of that. These are people who have no commitment to democracy whatsoever, even the minimal democracy that the United States has. In states like Wisconsin and Kentucky, for example, that have Democratic governors, but have an overrepresentation of Republicans in their legislatures, you can see this very clearly. Republicans have been gerrymandering and voting voter purging their way into success, doing everything they can to suppress voting, and doing everything they can to pull levers to make sure that the election is rigged well before any vote is cast. Because they will talk about election rigging in terms of, oh, people stealing votes and things like that, when that really isn't an issue. 
But when you talk about the structure of our democracy, which is structured in such a way to be undemocratic, to overrepresent rich white people over everybody else, Republicans have been accelerating and increasing that significantly. But the most scary part on top of this is the fact that Democrats really don't seem to be doing anything about it. They failed to pass any type of substantial voting rights legislation, and the committees investigating the January 6th insurrection are going really, really slow with it, to the point where the next election might come and go before anybody of substantial clout or significance would be arrested. The Democrats really don't seem to understand how dire the situation is. Not only because climate change is putting a clock on how fast progress needs to go, which is a heck of a lot faster than what we're doing right now, but also because the Republicans have basically shrugged off any commitment to democracy to the extent that should Donald Trump get elected again, the question becomes whether or not we even have another election on top of that. Democrats really think that our current systems that we have in place are enough to prevent any overturn or ending of democracy in the United States. But the harsh reality is, the structures and systems we have in place in the United States actually lean themselves more towards fascism than they do anything that looks like democracy. And these systems are only as strong as the people who are willing to uphold these systems. So if the Democrats continue to be as weak and feckless as they are, then the United States could find itself in a pretty difficult situation in a very short period of time. This is Ben Carolla with Rebel Headquarters. You can catch my show Galaxy Brain on the Young Turks Twitch channel every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. If you want to stay up to date with my content, you can follow me at Benjamin Carollo on Twitter. And lastly, to those of you who might be wondering or have noticed, my pronouns are in fact she, her.